Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and it's time to continue our Magic the Gathering story with the book The Brothers War. If you missed part one covering the Thran, here's a link for you to check that out. Trust me, you'll want the backstory. Also remember, I will prune out details here and there. The main goal of the series is to get you the primary plot points without meandering through the details for too long. Anyways, we fast forward through time from where we left off with the Thran. While this time period is different, this story takes place pretty much exactly where the Thran did geographically. Enjoy. This story begins following two brothers, Urza and Mishra, who pretty much hate each other. After being abandoned by their parents for basically being the worst kids ever, they end up with an archaeologist named Takasia. She works at a large archaeological dig site in the Falaji Desert. The two boys are naturally gifted when it comes to artifice. They can create, repair, and improve any of the artifacts found at the dig site. Something to note, these artifacts they're digging up, totally from the Thran. You can already tell where this is going, right? Anyways, while there are plenty of artifacts, they have no power sources. Not only that, but knowledge of power stones seem to have died with the Thran. One of the artifacts they find that actually works without power stones is the Ornithopter. You know, the zero-cost artifact creature, it's how meta. Urza fixes it up and soon after starts flying around the desert. On one of these trips, Mishra and Takasya accompany him. They are forced to land and take cover in a cave due to a giant bird. The Caves of Koyos. As they explore the cave, they discover an ancient Thran device with a large power stone embedded in it. Urza and Mishra start fighting over the power stone and it explodes into two pieces falling out of the machine. The device shows signs of life, but nothing meaningful happens. At least, not right then. Urza and Mishra continue to fight over who should get the entire power stone. They discover that Urza's half strengthens machines while Mishra's half weakens them. Urza names his half the Might Stone and Mishra's half the Weak Stone. They butt heads for a while about who should have the entire power stone. Mishra can't handle it anymore and violently confronts Urza about the entire situation. They begin fighting using their power stones, which shoot lasers. Takasya tries to intervene, but it's too late. The entire camp explodes around them. Takasya dies, the rest of the archaeology team dies, everyone's gone. Completely freaked out, Mishra runs away as fast as he can and the brothers part ways, each with their respective half of the power stone. Mishra kicks off his away time by immediately getting captured and turned into a slave by nomads of the Falaji Desert. We'll leave him be for a while. Urza finds his way to a city called Krug in the country of Yoshia. In this city, the warlord or king had a gigantic statue made in his own image and put it in the center of the city. The first man who could lift the statue would be allowed to marry his daughter Kayla. For some reason, the statue is at least a couple thousand pounds and nearly as tall as some two-story homes. Anyways, Urza quickly gets to work. He creates what we now know as Urza's Avenger. He then uses this machine to lift the statue in the center of the city without any problem at all and BOOM! Weds the warlord's daughter. Because, you know, the ladies love a man who can build things to pick up other things. If only life were that easy. Am I right? Back to Mishra. Using the power of the weak stone, Mishra slowly climbs the ranks of the Falaji. He also uses his weak stone to tame a dragon engine he finds, making him and the Falaji more powerful. Mishra takes on a female apprentice named Ashnod, known to be a sadistic genius and beverage aficionado. Urza also takes on an apprentice, his name is Thanos, and with his help Urza helps Yoshia and Krug thrive. It's at this point that the Falaji nomads in the country of Yoshia really just can't live side by side anymore. The Falaji have taken over multiple cities, and to be blunt, Yoshia is just plain sick of it. A peace summit is held. Representing Yoshia, Urza goes to the summit along with the warlord of Krug, Kayla, and his trusty Avenger. Representing the nomads, it's none other than Mishra. Naturally, he's riding his trusty dragon engine, which, you know, is a universal sign of peace. As you can imagine, the talks don't go very well. To be fair, this doesn't even have to do with Urza and Mishra seeing each other again. It went poorly, most likely because Mishra dumped a bag of hands on the negotiating table when things started turning south for him. The Ocean response to this was declare all-out war. Urza's machines kill a ton of Falaji. Mishra destroys Urza's Avenger with the weak stone. Urza's pretty upset by this, so they start fighting with their laser rocks again. Mishra is forced to retreat, and the battle ends. Mishra and Ashnod travel to the caves of Koyos, where Mishra had been before. 
He finds the portal to Phyrexia and notices more dragon engines inside. While attempting to tame them, he's attacked by none other than Gix. They do escape and close the portal, but we all know how much good that'll do. The war rages on for years and years. Mishra becomes the leader of the Falaji as he captures more nations using his dragon engines. As the years go by, Urza and Mishra just keep creating more and more constructs to attack each other with. As the war spreads, every nation in Terrasair is enveloped into the chaos. The continent has turned into a giant pile of artifice. Metal and glass are more abundant on the ground than grass or, well, anything natural. Basically, the entire country is a wasteland, is what I'm saying. Anyways, Mishra conquers a beautiful city-state far to the west called Teresia City. While there, Ashnod finds a Thran artifact called the Golgothian Silex that loosely describes an apocalypse or some kind of new beginning. It's at about this time that Gix decides to see what's up in Dominaria, you know, since the portal's open. He starts recruiting humans to be part of the Brotherhood of Gix. He uses these followers to infiltrate both sides of the war, hoping eventually to take both of them down. The war continues for decades after this, with countless people dying and the entire continent becoming practically uninhabitable. It's also probably time that I mention that Urza has a son. His name is Harbin. Trust me, this is how it was mentioned in the book. Urza's the definition of an absentee father. Back to the story. Harbin's out flying his ornithopter one day when he gets into a huge storm. He eventually crash lands on an island called Argith. This island is full of life. Trees, flowers, grass, wildlife. It's basically the opposite of everything he's ever seen growing up. Harbin rushes back and tells Urza about the island filled with resources. Gix hears of this and relays the information to Mishra. Both armies collapse on the island, destroying the natural inhabitants. To fight back, the remaining centaur elves and tree folk attempt to create a situation where Urza and Mishra must fight each other rather than Argith itself. It doesn't take much for this to happen as both Urza and Mishra are looking for a fight. The final battle of Argith commences with both sides throwing everything they have at each other. Mishra's apprentice Ashnod approaches Urza's apprentice Thanos and hands him the Golgothian Silex, hoping that Urza himself can fill it with good memories to start the world over anew. Gix tries to kill both of them, but Ashnod fights him long enough for Thanos to escape with the Silex and bring it to Urza. Ashnod dies in this altercation. Mishra engages Urza, but Urza notices something peculiar. Mishra hasn't aged a day. Remember, we're talking about decades of fighting. Urza's gray and old by now. Mishra should be the same, but he isn't. Anywho, they start fighting and Urza blasts Mishra with the Might Stone. What he sees next sets him off. Parts of Mishra are falling all over the place, but it's clear that that isn't Mishra. Underneath what looked like his brother was a ton of metal and flesh bonded together. Urza knows what he has to do and tells his apprentice Thanos to retreat as fast as possible. Urza freaks out when Mishra tries to counterattack. With all of his thoughts focused on a new world, he activates the Golgothian Silex. A gigantic explosion consumes Argoth in total destruction. The Silex annihilates the entire island. Mishra, both armies, gone. However, there were some survivors. Thanos made it away in time as to not get caught by the blast. Gix was able to outrace the explosion to the portal in the caves of Koyos and also escaped. Urza, who is at the center of the whole thing, ascends and becomes a planeswalker, preventing him from dying. His eyes are replaced by the Might Stone and the Weak Stone. Urza regroups and dedicates his efforts going forward to fighting Phyrexia. Urza is asked to stay and help rebuild the country, but he says he needs to leave the entire plane of Dominaria for a while. The book ends with Thanos heading toward the ruins of Yoshia and snow beginning to fall. I hope you enjoyed that retelling of the Brothers' War. In the next video, we'll see what happens to Urza after he leaves Dominaria. I feel like things are going to start getting intense. Phyrexia is back, Yagmoth is probably super grumpy, Urza killed his brother, kind of. It's just a really cool place to be. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and we'll talk about it. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable magic, the gathering information you could ever need. This is the Manosaurus, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.